So now we're going to be doing a Baker versus Car case. So the participants in this case were obviously Baker and Car. So the background for this is that each United States state is responsible for determining the legislative districts. But then, in the 1950s and 60s, questions began to arise about whether the state's division of voting districts was fair. The case was going to be primarily about whether federal courts could rule on the same way that they could draw their state boundaries for the purpose of electing members to state government. The problems that led to this case, the major issue in this state was whether federal courts had the power to divide cases about the depending on the population. They wanted to know if they could divide the cases based on the population in each state legislative district. So the plaintiff in this case was Baker, and he said that the courts should be able to divide this issue. Any political questions that the courts ha should have should not be addressed or, sh or sorry, any questions that the court have should not address or not be defined are typically defined by a number of different factors. The courts need to instruct the legislator to fix any violations of the Constitution. One of his major complaints is that the vote does not count as equally for others, and he felt as though this was a serious violation of his rights. The states have also suggested that the voters' concerns can be recommended by the officials in the state. So the defendant in this case was Carr, who said that the federal courts did not have the right to review the legislative districts. Simply, one branch of government should not tell the other one what they needed to do. The courts have always viewed redistricting as a political function to the states and the federal government should not have a say for how they do so. The courts do not need to interfere with the dem democratic process, according to him. So this case went to the Supreme Court because, again, it's going to set a president for the rest of the court cases that are, come, that are gonna come along going for this issue. That's why it came all the way to the Supreme Court because it was the first one of its kind. Again, this is why the court decided to hear it. The court held that redistricting qualifies as a um, justable question, thus allowing the federal courts to rehear any redistricting cases. So the court's decision was that they decided that the lower court's decision could not hear this case was not correct. Federal courts have the authority to enforce the requirement of equal protection of the law against state officials. And... The court established a president that federal courts should allow residents to try and prove that legislative districts are not balanced, or and not balanced. They decided this way because there was no reason that the courts could not determine whether the state districts may enter into drawing the redrawing of districts and is justly enforceable. So the vote count was six to two, six being for Baker. So the dissenting opinion in this case was that. They said that the court's own presidents were clear and consistent in refusing to, in refusing to review a state's districting questions. So again, this case was significant because it set a precedent for cases that would come on the future on the basis of redistricting. Again, the impact that it had on America was that it was going to be setting a precedent based on Baker's thoughts that they were allowed to do the redistricting if, as they said, it was enforceable. Um, again, I think that this case was fairly settled because under the Equal Protection Clause in the Constitution, there's nothing that forbids the action that the courts took in this particular case.